So for this video, I'm just going to attempt adding a voiceover on top of my video instead of putting in some random SoundCloud music from like underground artists that don't have any copyright on it. I mean, I do like promoting good music, but it's taking a while for me to find that good music and eventually I'll run out and I'll have to like beg artists to make more. <laughs> so right now I'm sketching my drawing and I'll be just describing what I'm doing, what I'm thinking about, maybe give you some advice as I'm drawing. I'm doing my first pass of the sketch and usually my sketch goes in stages so I this is my second attempt at a sketch I kind of just like every time I do my every time I do a new layer of a sketch I try to make it as neat as possible but I still add some more details and it gets sketchy again after a while so I do a pass of another sketch on top of that and I keep doing that keep adding more layers of sketches and deleting the old ones until I'm satisfied with it until it's clean enough that I can actually paint underneath. So yep, here's me just finalizing. I think this is my final sketch of it. I've kind of got the hang of what her expression should be. My inspiration came from Pinterest. There was a girl that I found that she was looking out into space, into nothingness, and I really liked the way her hair was flowing and how like her expression was pondering and you kind of wonder what is she thinking about? And so that was a goal of my drawing, was to kind of give it a background story that the viewer had to tell themselves. I wasn't going to tell a story with this one, but it, the point was to make you think of a story for her. So yep, and then I started with my underpainting. No, not underpainting, but my basic painting. Because I want to I wanna make the painting underneath as complete as possible before I get rid of the liner because as you can see from my previous drawings that I try to get rid of the liner I'm not too into outlining I think when you're trying to do semi-realism putting an outline will drown out the colors and the details that you've put it between it as you can see from most of my paintings that my style is actually very unsaturated and kind of dark I really like the aesthetic of light being behind the character instead of in front of them and being super saturated. I think it gives like a super mysterious and dramatic feel to it. I wasn't quite sure what to do with the eyes. The eyes were orange and I was like, well, her eyes are kind of evil. It's too bright. But then my sister came and said, no, it's cool. It's unique. It's cool. So I was like, okay, that's, that's that. It's cool. <laughs> I realized after a while that my that my painting was getting a little flat. I didn't have a lot of, I didn't have a wide range of values between my colors. I just kind of had my outline and then my base colors. When I did a grayscale check, it it looked like there was not much variation. It didn't look very 3D. So that's why I used an HSV scale to f help me figure out, well, to help me pick a lower value. When I shade, I usually use HSV scale so that I can lower the saturation and then lower the value. It makes it easier for me. So I made the outline lighter. I made it brown because there's really no such thing as black in real life. So I continued on adding more details, more highlights, and then I started working on the jacket. I actually ignored the jacket for quite a while because I wasn't sure what color to make it. I didn't know how to shade it. Like I didn't know what hue to make the darker color of it. I wanted the jacket to be blue just because my reference picture of the jacket was blue. But it was really just guess and check for that part of the drawing. The hair is the fun part. I think the hair is always the fun part. Um, but I think I got kind of carried away with it after a while. After shading it with a red hued shadow, it was starting to look red like I didn't want her to have red or orange hair but because I was using red as my shadow it was starting to look like that so I've added a new layer on top of everything to add in the details so now I'm starting to get rid of the outlines but still keeping some of them because I am using the outline as my darkest color and add the details I'm using a guideline so that I can you know, correct myself after a while of adding in the details on top of the outline because once I start getting rid of the outline, this is the most dangerous part, I lose my guides. So 
I have to keep coming back and making sure that I'm still in line with proportions and balance. So when I got rid of the outline near the jaw here, I realized that my values weren't dark enough still. Like for some reason, it was all still really flat. I'm kind of all over the place when I color. I'm like really all over the place because um, when I see something that's not finished, I'll move on to that. And then when I scan the whole drawing and I see something else that's not finished, I move on to that. I don't really don't have a process in painting. I just complete the entire thing. So when I flipped over the canvas, I realized that there was a straight line on the left side of her face or the right side of her face. And it was kind of ruining the flowiness of her hair. So I just added a strand that kind of went into her face that, so that I didn't have any straight lines that would really bother the composition. Near the end, I started speed rushing, speed finishing the painting because I was getting really impatient. I only have three to four hours of patience when I'm doing a painting, especially when I start late. It was 11 p.m. and I just didn't want to do it anymore. So I wanted to finish it, like even though it's not as complete as I would have hoped it to be, I still wanted to get something out and I did experience it, I learned it, and people might like it if they see it, so it's, it's okay to not finish a painting. Like if you want to post it, finish it enough that it looks finished, even though it's not finished in your own eyes. <laughs> Just move on to the next painting. It'll probably be, be probably be better than this one. Because that's the thing, every new drawing is better than the old one. Well, it better be. <laughs> because you're supposed to learn from every painting, after each painting. So yep, I added a less saturated, darker valued shadow here and it was starting to look better. And that's how you add depth in the drawing is to just make it darker. Even though it looks like way too dark because of the other colors around it, you really need to have that wider range of values in your painting so it doesn't look so flat. So I added the highlights in the eyes. I was like, I really couldn't wait to add highlights in the eyes because I was getting creeped out by it like I didn't <laughs> I'm not used to putting irises in eyes honestly a lot of my paintings I just get rid of the iris because it's so hard to it's so hard to center it in the eye because I don't like doing it if I don't like doing it I won't do it <laughs> but I forced myself here because I wanted to make a complete enough drawing here was fixing the shading in the hair because I told you before it was starting to look red so I added some more greens into it and more grays so that it would actually look like brown hair. In the shirt, I got rid of the stripes because, well, I was impatient and I wanted to finish it. And stripes would have made it a lot harder. I'm adding the highlights and the finishing touches because I wanted to go. I wanted to go to my bed, sit down, lie down, <laughs> and go on my phone until I fall asleep. Near the end, I added some more highlights to the hair just to make it pop out more. Highlights around her because light can still show at the back of her head. And then I worked on the background so that I could blur it. And then added some water droplets or snow, whatever it is. Put motion blur on it and then finish the painting with a signature. And that's it. Have a good weekend. I hope that video was somewhat useful to you. And if you want to see the drawing, it's on my Instagram or on my art station in the links below.